Feel my shirt. Ooh. You know what it's made of? What? Boyfriend material. Ooh, I like it. All right. Well, class, if you guys like that pickup line, you should hold on to your seats. Maybe hold on to the person next to you if you'd like. Because we're going to talk about dating. An issue that is going on right now, we are in college, might even be struggling with it. Now, take a look around. What do you see? You might see an attractive lady, a handsome gentleman. You might see your crush, or maybe an ex. But today, we're gonna, our goal is to inform you guys about dating, uh, establishing a healthy relationship, and if the unfortunate happens, a breakup. So, with, with that being said, most of you all might be thinking, nah, I'm a good dater. What am I going to listen to us for? Well, the answer is we could all use a little bit of help. We're going to discuss the do's and the don'ts of dating. Dating is a cycle, and it consists of several topics. Now, these topics begin with acquaintances. Right when you meet, once you, get, once you meet, you become more than friends. After that, the first date, hopefully you make it to casual dating. Hopefully you get past that first date. Now, if you do, casual dating goes into the setting. Setting the mood for the night while you're dating. And then the final thing, establishing the relationship and the unfortunately, maybe break up. Okay, well first of all, you begin with the acquaintance stage. The, uh, it's when your adventure begins. It's when you make that first when you make that first walk across the room to that special someone, and in our day and age, it could be a guy or a girl. Um, you walk across the room, and they're waiting there, and you just want to and you want to engage with them in conversation. So, pretty much this stage is like I said, it's about engaging them in conversation, and you cannot let fear sway you because really. If that person is really that important to you, and you really like them that much, then you're going to want to just, you know, go for the gusto, just go for it, and put yourself out there. Uh, for the most part, though, it is more uh, socially accepted that the guy um, makes the first contact, but uh, because of, you know, our day and age and how things are today, uh, a girl can do it too, but mostly, you know, just a, a Word to the wise, it's best if a guy does it. Now, there are a couple things that you do do when you want to engage someone in conversation. You want to talk to them. You want to walk up to them and, you know, engage them in conversation and just and really kind of find somewhere that you can really relate on. The, another thing you want to do is help them out with something. Now I know it may sound like a cliche, but if, you know, a girl drops her pencil or a guy drops their pencil, you know, help them pick it up. Or let's say you're at a restaurant and you see that the, uh, the attractive waitress has uh, dropped a, a mug on the floor, pick it up and, you know, smile, be charming, kind of, kind of turn it on a little bit for them and not, you know, don't, you know, get all, get all up on them. Just, <laughs> Just be cool, but at the same time, really attract them and just kind of connect with them. Also, you have to be confident. You have to be very confident in doing all of these things. And with that confidence, you have to do a little bit of flirting, too. Because now, at this part, everybody is different when it comes to flirting. How you do it and to the intensity that you do it, that's based on you. Don't try to be too much. Don't try to be too little. Just be yourself. Really be yourself. Uh, make that person feel wanted. And this is also a part of the confidence and a part of the flirting. Make them feel like they are wanted and that you actually really do care about that person on a deeper level other than just being friends. And that can, you know, set the stage for a lot of other things. And, you know, just, like I said, talking to them. That is the biggest thing that you can do is talk to them, you know, get to know them a little bit, ask them about themselves, ask them how their life is going, and you are sure, you are sure to get a, uh, a good outcome. Alright, so now that you guys know the things that you should do when you're in the acquaintance stage, here's the things you should do. You don't want to start it off by staring. Like, it's good to make eye contact, it's not good to like, stare. I don't know, like, it's creepy. Just don't do it. 
Uh, bad hygiene, yeah, no one likes dinosaur breath, really. Seriously, like, no one likes to be like within close proximity of someone who kind of smells pretty bad. Uh, if you don't shower, yeah, that counts too. Yeah, you're gonna look greasy, disgusting, and unapproachable. Don't do that. Stay classy. Yeah, don't turn the charm to the point where you're just kind of being a little bit too sexual. It's a little bit of a turnoff. And it's, I don't even think it's legal. So, um, don't do that. And last but not least, don't appear desperate. No one likes someone that tries really hard and it's like blatantly obvious that they are trying to like get in your pants. Like, no, that's kind of like, you're, you're peeing too desperate. You've got to be confident. That's how you win a date. Regardless if you're a guy or a girl, everyone loves confidence. Ah, uh, the friend zone. <laughs> I know we've all been there. Either if we have friend zoned somebody or been friend zoned ourselves, and really don't take anything personal towards it, because even after you become acquaintances, there's this awkward transition where you don't know if you want to become more than friends or or if you just want to be friends. And honestly, the best way to avoid the friend zone is to have your intentions clear from the beginning. Because if you treat them like a friend from the beginning, that's sort of how they're going to react to you and how they're going to treat you. But if you treat them like you want to date them, then that's how it's going to like continue the flow of the relationship. Now, with uh, the friend zone, you want to keep the flirtation going because if you just like sit there, like after you become acquaintances with them, if you just sit there and just like kind of just like, oh yeah, like hey, what's up? <laughs> like they're they're obviously not gonna like like be very well towards you, and you want to like react to their responses. So like when they're when they're like touching you or something, or they're like being flirty with you, you don't want to just like sit there and just like okay cool like <laughs> like you want to like smile back at them, like keep it up. Um, prepare for the for the friend zone because. No matter what, like, it doesn't mean anything towards you or anything, but they might just not be interested in you as a relationship, so you have to keep that in mind. You can't take anything personal towards it, and you just have to be able to accept it if it does happen, but don't be, like, like just, like, waiting for it to happen. Like, you don't want it to happen, but if it does happen, like, don't take offense to it. And that also goes with the reading body language, because if they're, like, being flirtatious with you and all that stuff, like, there's some girls that are just, like, flirty with everybody, so you might not know if they are. But, um, the body language really can, like, give you an indication on if you're getting friends in or not, so you really want to pay attention to that. Now, some of the don'ts is, uh, don't treat them like your guy friend if you're a guy, or don't treat them like your girlfriend if you're a girl. So you don't want to be, like, farting in front of them and be like, haha, <laughs> like, good one, man, like... <laughs> and you don't want to creep them out, like, don't, like, come up behind them, like... You smell pretty. <laughs> so, and that also kind of goes with uh, stay away from sexual jokes because when you're first starting out, like sexual jokes can be like creepy. But if like sexual jokes are like a part of your personality, like you also don't want to not say them, but you kind of like save them for later. Like you don't want to creep them out with them. Like you want to wait till you're a little bit more like like confident with them and they're comfortable with you. So that way, when you do like say something like that, because you don't want to hide who you are. But you don't want to creep them out, so you want to wait until they're a little bit more comfortable with you. And also, uh, don't express strong opinions about politics or like religion or any of that, because you don't want to like, like say something like, "Oh yeah, like Ron Paul, he sucks," and like they're like, "Oh, I love Ron Paul." Like, <laughs> like so you want to like save that also for later in the relationship, and you don't want to like scare them away with any of your strong opinions. But after you become established, like they probably won't be as detrimental as they might at the beginning. Alright, date preparation. First off, stay within your budget. Or as Kevin Hart would say, stay within your financial lane. Okay? <laughs> it doesn't take a lot of money to have a good time. You can still have fun with your date while staying in your budget. Particularly for the males, since they're mostly the ones that's going to be paying, hopefully at least. 
Next, be adventurous and original. It's okay to go for the typical dinner and a movie day, but it's not recommended. If you want to make an impact and a good impression, try going to like the park rollerblading and having ice cream or something. Maybe have lunch later. Anything out of the ordinary. Next, offer your date a ride, particularly the males again. But in males, if she does not want to go with you and she wants to take her own car, let her, okay? We don't want her freaking out on the passenger seat. Oh my god, watch that car. Oh my... No, we don't want that, okay? It's not a good way to start off a date, okay? So let her take her own car and let it go smoothly, alright? Next, meet at a public area. We say this for two reasons. Safety and pressure, okay? Safety, because you don't know who you might be with. You can maybe be with a stalker or a raper or... Uh, er of any kind, okay? <laughs> so you don't want to be with somebody alone and they might do something. I don't, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> anyway, and the second one, pressure. When you, t when you tend to be around a lot more people, you tend to be more relaxed and you're alone with a girl or guy you like. You're just going to be like, oh, should I talk to them now? I don't know. It's going to turn out like that, okay? And the don'ts. Don't play it safe. Try not to go for the typical movie and play have her hoping that she'll lift, like put her head on your uh, shoulders and you put your arm around her. No, it's not going to go that way most of the time. So try not to play it safe and take risks. Talk to them. Don't be afraid to say, say stuff that you wouldn't usually do. Next, don't make a grand gesture, particularly the guys because we like to do that. Don't be like, oh, I'm a boss. Yeah, I know. Don't do that. Remember this, guys. The better your date looks, the better you look overall to other people. Okay? <laughs> and finally, if you do offer your date a ride and she takes you up on your offer, don't go and be like, hey, babe, I'm outside. Okay? Like, to go out of your car, pick her up from the door, and then take her to your car. I've been picking on the guys a little bit, now I'm going to pick on the girls. The girls, if your boyfriend in any way doesn't like open the car door for you, don't make a big deal out of it and make them open the door for you, okay? Then it's just a turn off for guys mostly. If it's like, so just don't do that. And make sure you have a backup plan or an escape plan. It doesn't even matter what it may be. If you just if somebody is one of those errs, you gotta get out of there immediately, okay? So it doesn't even matter what it is. Like, hey, oh, sorry, my little brother got hurt at school. I need to go pick him up. It doesn't matter. Just get out of there, okay? And those are the do's and don'ts of date preparation. So you made it to the date after all of that. So what do you do while you're having the date? Well, there's do's and don'ts of that as well. The thing you probably want to do the most is be real and honest. Like, this is your first impression with the person. This is your first time really getting to know them in an intimate setting. So you don't want to be like, yeah, I have like 12 cars and like a million dollars in my bank account and like lions and stuff. You don't really want to do that because you set yourself up for failure. You want to be real and honest. Um, don't brag, don't boast. Also, you want to keep the conversation going. Obviously, we're going to have some awkward moments. It's a first date. It's going to happen. But you want to just keep it going so you can avoid those awkward moments where you're not just, like, staring at each other and, like, okay, um, where's my food or what's going on? You want to keep it going. But you want to keep it light. Most importantly, don't go into religion. Don't go into politics unless you want your date to be offended. These topics avoid at all costs. They're really heavy, they're really offensive, and you just you just want to have a good time, so don't get really into that. And have manners. I just have to say, I went on a date one time with this guy, and we were at Chili's, and he was eating chips and like spewing the chips out at me while we were like eating. And then he, we got our meal, and he was like digging into it, and there was like cheese all over his face, and I was just so embarrassed, because that looks bad on me as well. So have manners. Don't rip one while you're at the booth. Don't burp in my face, please. Don't spit food at me. Have proper manners. And also, don't talk offensively. That same guy, he was dropping like the N word and the F word and the C word at Chili's and was like echoing everywhere. It was, it was really embarrassing. So make sure you have manners. Don't be rude and uh, don't be gross. Dress well. 
Remember, this is your first date. Don't overdo it because you don't want to like kill the person with your cologne or perfume. They want to be able to breathe after the date. And um, be creative and be a creature of mystery. Don't lay it all out. Hey, I've had like 12 surgeries and like four failed relationships and like three crazy exploits. No, you don't want to do that on the first date. Leave it to the till you're in the relationship. That way, they're not freaked out by like your first impression. And take hints in body language. If you're sitting there and you're staring at everyone else in this restaurant except for me, I'm going to think you're not interested in me. So it's important that you make sure you look like you're interested in the person, even if you're not. It's just polite. It's not something you really want to do. And that's the do's and don't of the first date. All right, ending the night. Everybody's favorite part, of course. First off, offering her offer to pay the bill, particularly the males. And guys, that's a sign for you to bring extra cash, okay? <laughs> when you pay the bill, um, it's okay for the female to pitch in, but they should not be paying more than half, okay? And that's only because they might feel bad for you paying the whole thing, all right? And next, if it's feeling right, you may go for a kiss, only when it's right for both members, okay? I'm gonna tell you guys something. Did you know 8 out of 10 women think the first kiss will tell them all they need to know about a relationship? That puts a lot of pressure on you guys, okay? So I'm going to <laughs> so tell you guys how to do it right right now, okay? First off, bring mints for after dinner. We don't need you guys smelling like garlic after dinner, okay? Next, what you want to do, she will signal for the kiss, okay? You do not automatically assume it, she will signal for it. After that, you will go 90% of the way and she will go 10, okay? Do not go the full 100 or it's going to make you seem like you're aggressive, okay? And remember, be calm. Don't panic and be like, oh my gosh, was that the signal? I don't know. 90, 95, no, that's too far. No. Stay calm, relax, and let it flow, okay? And walk, to the, walk her to her car if she took her own ride. And maybe that's when she wants to initiate the kiss. You don't know. You gotta pay attention for signs and take hints. And if she did take you up on your offer for the ride, take her to the front door. Maybe that's when she wants to initiate the kiss. You don't know. So take every possible, like any possible way you can get that kiss, because that will tell you that's a big thing for the females, apparently. And the don'ts. Yeah, okay, the don'ts. <laughs> Don't expect to be paid for, females. Always bring the extra cash, okay? <laughs> because your boyfriend might be uh, a moron or an idiot or something. So have the extra money, okay? And when you do, when you don't insist, like, are you going to pay for me? No. Don't do that because that's going to be kind of rude, okay? So always, like, take out your purse, get ready to pay, and if he says, no, I got this, then you can back off and put your purse away, okay? Don't automatically assume he will pay for you because for all you know, he could be broke, all right? <laughs> Next, don't rush into anything, particularly sex. I'm not gonna go too deep with this. If you're having sex right off the bat on the first date, I give your relationship two weeks tops before it goes <laughs> downhill, okay? After that, don't stress out even if the date went bad, okay? Um, if they did not have to use their escape plan on you, then you have, still have a chance, okay? All you have to do is finish up strong, and then hopefully you'll get a chance on the second date. You might not get the kiss you wanted, but you will get that chance for a second date. And I'll leave you guys with that. Wow. Guess what? You have gotten past that date. Man, that's wonderful. Man, that's such good news. Um, but the thing that you have to be conscientious about at this point is the casual dating, meaning the second date and the dates that, you know, follow in, you know, the time together. Uh, the biggest difference between the first date and the casual dating stage is not only are you discovering each other a bit more, getting deeper, but it, there's also a bit more leniency and, and things can get interesting. Uh, in, this, in this part, uh, some people may believe that having pre premarital sex is something that's wrong, and there are some out there that believe that it's, that it's okay. So for this part, um, 
you can uh, you can use whatever uh, discretions you want to, but just to, just pay this out. I think you may find this is very interesting. Uh, the do's. Uh, try inviting them to a date at your house because at this point, that's absolutely okay to do. If you want to do that, that's great. Also, you can delve into some deeper topics, you know, discovering each other a bit more. Uh, you know, still be a little light on politics and religion, but you, but you need to touch on those because that will really uh, give you the keys to the depth of the, uh, the similarity you have with your now significant other. Um, you can also uh, be a little less mysterious, but still a little bit of mystery is good, but being less mysterious. By that, I mean just kind of, you know, put, put the wall down a little bit and just kind of, you know, show that other part of yourself that you were kind of saving till the casual dating stage after that first date when you needed to keep that up. Now, you can take it down, which is really cool. Uh, and also, com you can commit to promises at this point. That is something that uh, will be at your discretion, however. What you want to do is, you have to keep in mind that for, you know, for certain age groups, a promise may mean, uh, a promise of forever may mean just, you know, until I'm, I'm done with you or um, my feelings for, me, for you have written their course. Or for other age groups, it could be, you know, forever could really, really mean forever. And there's so many possibilities at this stage. It's just, it's amazing. Be honest. Just, just like my, uh, my fellow presenters have said, honesty is the best policy. Do not be fake. Because down the road, that will subtract dividends from your relationship. That will just take away so much of that foundation that you're trying to build. Uh, continue to be yourself. That is another big thing. Be Continue to be yourself and do not do a complete 180 from the person that you were when you were doing your first date and at the end of that first date. Uh, have a nothing to lose mentality. That means that, just like I said earlier, where you could take down that wall, you could be more open because if you've gotten to this stage, that means that there is a, a, a spark in between you two, and that spark can cause a lot of things. So have nothing to lose mentality. Uh, also, just to you know keep this in your mind so that you don't go full force into the thing. Be mindful that you might not be right for each other. Be very mindful of that because sometimes the relationships don't necessarily go the course that you want it to go. So just keep that in mind. However, there are some don'ts to the stage. Don't invite them to the same place as the first date. Now this goes without saying because not only does that show a lack of originality, but it also shows a lack of memorization, meaning, oh, I took you here on the first date, so I need to take you somewhere else, or we need to go somewhere else. Uh, don't think of them automatically as being the one. Like I said, just be prepared that this that this may go a, a different way than you were planning on. Uh, don't reveal everything about yourself just yet. You will have other other dates and other times you can be together to reveal certain things by yourself, and that is very very important. Uh, don't regret this isn't the last chance that you'll have at companionship, because if later on you, you do break up. Don't regret it because, I mean, I know it's a cliche, but there are other fish in the ocean that you can cast out your net and you can bring one in. So just be, be prepared for that. And this part is very important and it goes back for hundreds of years. Do not introduce to the family just yet because, ladies, let's say you want to introduce your, your, uh, your boyfriend to your dad. And uh, let's say he's not particularly excited about that. Maybe there's a reason he's not excited about that. And think about that. And, and it's the same thing on the flip side. Guys, don't introduce your girlfriends to your family just yet. You have to be sure that the feelings are really there, that it's really real, and that things are going swell. Just keep that in mind. All right.
guys. So we made it past casual dating and setting the mood. All right, before we dive into this subject, we are not here to persuade anyone to do anything, not to do anything. We are here to inform you if you do decide to make this move and have sex. Setting the mood, let's face it. A lot of people might not want to wait until marriage to have sex. But if you do, here's a little do's and don'ts to spice up the night. All right, candles. If you want to use candles, candles help a lot. Just the candlelight. It will flatter you and your partner's bodies. But while you are flattering each other's bodies with this candlelight, do not forget the candle is still going while you get distracted. Make <laughs> nothing kills the mood worse than getting distracted, having to come, pull out the fire extinguisher because your table is on fire. All right, just keep that in mind, please. Also, turn on some sexy music. Get the mood going, something nice. I don't know what, whatever you or your partner are into, set the music right. Don't turn on the radio, please. Do not turn on the radio. Nothing kills the mood more than a commercial coming on talking about this big monster truck rally and these loud noises and you're having a nice day. I mean, if you're into that, that's cool. Turn on a monster truck rally radio station. If not, please don't turn on the radio. That'll bring us to the next thing. Also, play around, make it fun. Do not be afraid to be yourself. Play some playful games. Um, maybe a card game. Maybe make up your own game. Show some originality. Show up your adventurous side. Guys, ladies, all right? But don't run, rush into exploring each other. Don't make the game uncomfortable. Make sure that it is uh, within the comfort level of both you and your partner. Also, don't keep score. Don't, <laughs> don't be like, nah, you're cheating. Hey, for real, I'm winning, stop. Don't do that. No, don't be a stickler. At the end of the night, you should both be winners. Um, also, don't put attention to anything else. He or she is your main focus. And at the end of the night, remember one thing, be safe. And that will bring us to the next slide. Alright, so after you, uh, you, know, you have some fun, maybe, maybe not, you know, uh, we go into this thing, it's called an established relationship. What an established relationship is, is that you two decide that you two are exclusive. You two think that you two hit it off really well and you two might want to spend more time with each other. Show each other that you trust each other, and so forth. Um, there are two parts of an established relationship. There's the individual part, which we're going to talk about right now, and then the teamwork part that comes after the slide. So here's some do's. Take responsibility for your own happiness. Realize that they don't have to keep you happy. They're being themselves, you should be yourself. And if you're sad, you're the one that has to be in charge of getting you back up to yourself, be happy. Make good in your own words. This kind of means like, if you say something, follow through with it. Nothing shows a bad relationship than a lack of trust for your partner. It's, it's just not good and you don't want to hit it off that way. Admit to your mistakes. Let's face it, we're all adults, and we make mistakes. I make mistakes, you make mistakes, and everyone in relationships, they make mistakes. It's normal. But um, owing up to it, admitting that you made a mistake can make a relationship prosper. It shows that you have trust and that you're not willing to hide anything. Uh, be open, honest, realistic, and supportive. You're in a relationship. Relationship is two. It means that it's you and your partner. So you have to be open. You have to be supportive. Because when they're down, you might want to help them up. Or if they're having trouble, you might want to help them out. That's what a relationship is. It's teamwork. Um, I also want to be honest because, again, a lack of trust. Without trust, you can't prosper. You can't grow into this beautiful thing called a relationship. It'll just go down the toilet. And last, uh, for the do's, give them space. The plant needs space to grow, and so does a relationship. If you kind of smother that like space, there is no room to grow, and that relationship will go down into a spiral. Now that you know the do's, here are some don'ts. Don't make promises that you cannot follow up on. Again, this goes with the whole lack of trust, lack of commitment, I probably made a bad choice choosing you as my partner. Uh, deny, don't deny your actions if you made a mistake. Again, that does reiterate about the idea that if you cover up a mistake or you don't alter it, 
then you're probably a bad partner for your partner. Uh, don't hide anything from your partner. Yeah, if you did something illegal or you did something that you probably shouldn't be doing, like cheating or something that's not good, then they're not going to spend any time with you at all. They're probably going to drop you there right on the instant. And lastly, don't be with them at all times. Seriously, I mean, no one likes that clingy, like, I want to be with you all day long, 24-7, a whole No, seriously, <laughs> kills the mood. Don't do it. Now, the teamwork. Relationships are a team. I mean, it's you and your partner, and hopefully it's just you and your partner. Here are some dudes. Do revive date night. Realize that you two are exclusive, but that doesn't mean you're done dating. I mean, that's kind of boring. Go out on a date, dress up nice, go to Panera Bread, go somewhere that you two like. Maybe even go back on the place that you two finally met each other. But just revive it, don't let it die. Practice forgiveness. People make mistakes. It happens. If you practice forgiveness, you can see the real side of somebody else. You can probably preserve the relationship that you probably wouldn't have if you didn't have forgiveness. Show your laugh and love to each other. This is actually pretty important. It, there's a difference from knowing you're loved than from showing somebody that you love them. If you know you're loved, then, I mean, yeah, cool, that's fine. But if you show them that you're loved, you two can not only have fun, but feel, you know, trustworthy in a relationship. Better your communication skills. Texting, calling, if they, you know, ask for your attention, give them that attention. Of course, you might be busy, have a meeting, you're at work, doing whatever, but get back to them. Even if it's just to say, hey, I'm busy, call me later, or text me later. Better your communication skills. And lastly for the dudes, learn to trust one another. Again, a relationship is based off of trust. No trust, no relationship. And that's the end. For the don'ts, don't have dates every night. I know I said revive date night, but that doesn't mean go out on a date every night. Not only is that going to hurt your wallet, but I mean, it gets stale after a while, and then you kind of defeat the whole purpose of the relationship. Uh, don't bring up past guys, mistakes, etc. Seriously, if people make mistakes, you should acknowledge that they don't really want to talk about all that much. If they have past scars, physically or emotionally, about certain events that changed their lives, don't go too deep into it, unless they give you permission. Uh, don't forget the little things, the details that make your uh, relationship all the more better. Follow up on those things. Don't forget them. If you like that cologne you wear, or you like that bow tie that you put in your hair, well then, keep that going up. Uh, don't hold grudges. Again, people make mistakes. You've got to trust them, and you've got to be forgiving. Don't forget to show them that you two love each other. I mean, if you know you're loved, doesn't that feel kind of a little bit meh? But if they show you that they love you, doesn't that feel like you're wanted? It feels better for both partners. And lastly, the most important thing for the team relationship, do not cheat. This, if you cheat, you're a scumbag. That's it. It's horrible. You're not even a human at that point. You're just a player, a pimp. You're horrible. Seriously, guys, cheating, not only does that break a relationship, but that kind of deteriorates yourself, an individual. And that, a reputation, that is something important to you. You can't let that crumble just because you cheated on somebody. So now we're going to head into the next topic, breakups. Relationships are a cycle, as you can see. You meet someone, you become friends, more than friends, you date, you have a relationship, all good things come to an end. Now, Breakups, we've all been through breakups. Raise your hand if you've been through a breakup. Everyone's hair should go up. I mean, don't you're hide. Doing... Break up in person. It may be hard because they're crying or they're giving you all these reasons why you shouldn't go, but if you feel like it's right for you in your life, you're the most important person. So you need to say, hey, look, I'm sorry. Stick with what you feel. If you feel like you need to break up, do it in person. Another thing, be honest, but not mean. Don't say, oh, it's me, not you. This is why we need to break up. If it's because the person's too clingy, just say, hey, I just need some space. Don't be mean, like, oh my gosh, you're so ridiculous. You're breathing down my neck every single day. I can't stand it. Because the person, you just broke up with them. They're probably feeling pretty low. Don't kick them when they're down. But at least give them, tell them what's going on so they're not like, I thought everything was okay and I thought we were working out. Be honest, but don't be mean. Be the per bigger person. I know from experience, I've been broken up with, and I have said so many mean things to the person, like, you're this and you're that, and I hope you never fall in love again, and I hope you die or fall off a cliff and because I'm hurt. Don't do that, because it just makes you look pathetic. I know. Trust me.
So what you need to do is say, accept it, it's okay, be the bigger person, don't call them names, don't be mean, don't flick them off or punch them or whatever, just be the bigger person. Look at the positives. You're single. Are you kidding me? I'm 21. I'm single. You're all under 21 or 21. You're single. Let's go out and have a good time. You're not tied down by some loser. Come on. That's a positive. Reconnect with people that you haven't talked to in a while. Be friends with people you've never met. Like, you know, go out and explore yourself. This is your time. It's positive. And be able to receive it. Look, let's be honest, we're all going to be broken up with at some point in our lives. Just be prepared and know that it's not the end of the world. Life will go on. So that's really important. And also, that's all the kind of positive things and the do's with breaking up. And Nick's going to tell you what not to do when you break up. Alright, so the don'ts. Um, don't make a lame excuse because we know it's a lame excuse. Um, you're not fooling anyone. Uh, so they know they're getting lied to, which also don't lie because they know that you're going to lie to them. So just be real with them and uh, everything will hopefully work out well. Don't make it hard on yourself. Um, even if you're the one breaking up with them, you might be feeling a little low or something, but like, surround yourself with people you like. Uh, don't beat yourself up. Like You just want to like be positive at this time. Uh, don't break up over text or Facebook because I mean, I've been broken up with over text and that sucks. But I've also had a friend who broke up with his girlfriend over Facebook, but he wasn't intending to. The girl, like, they were, like, starting to be rough, patchy type stuff, and the girl messaged him on Facebook and, like, kind of started, like, a fight that led into a breakup. So if you think that you're going to get broken up with, like, don't, like, instigate over Facebook, because then it might lead to getting broken up with over Facebook. So, like, if you have, if you want that conversation, try to have it in person and not over, like, social networks. Um, don't give them false hope, because they might, like, try to, like, cling on to you afterwards, even if you're, like, okay, like, seriously. But, um, so you, like, don't want to give the false hope, and don't break up while drunk. I think that kind of speaks for itself. <laughs> if, uh, you're not confident enough to break up with them without alcohol, then, I mean, you probably shouldn't be dating them, or you just, yeah, don't break up while drunk. Um, don't seek revenge, because no one likes a sore loser. Uh, don't go, like, break their car or anything. Um, I actually had, I know this person who told me a story that, um, his friend, uh, before school, took a dump on this girl's car, <laughs> and she like texted him, she was like, did you take a shit on my car? <laughs> and he was like, what, no? But yeah, so like, don't get your car pooped on, <laughs> that's bad. And uh, that's all the adults are breaking up. Alright guys, so, as our time is ending, we have to realize something. Breakups, they really do suck. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're giving the news or receiving the news. It really does suck, but uh, let's face it, the reality is that breaking up is just another part of the dating cycle. Hopefully you'll be back up on your feet, dating someone, maybe establishing a relationship, and hopefully maintaining that relationship. But if you want to do that, if you want to go back into the cycle, you have to be willing to deal with your past. Realize that you can't grab what's in front of you until you let go of what's behind you. You can't move on until you deal with your mistakes. Why do I say that? Well, everyone deserves a chance to find their true soulmate, to find the person that they want to spend time with. I say this to you guys because you guys are all unique. You guys are all interesting. And most importantly, you guys are pretty beautiful in your own little way. Uh, your ex <laughs> might think differently. Your ex might think you are <laughs> the biggest piece of crap on the earth. <laughs> but to that special somebody, to that one person that has lo been looking long and hard for you, you might mean the world to them. So, pick yourself up. Wipe the tears off your face and do what you must. You'll find that special person. Just keep trying. Thank you very much and have a good day.